system of equations that has more equations than unknowns is what's called an overdetermined system. With linear algebra, it's a non-square system that has more rows than columns. And the overdetermined system has a fatal flaw. Unless all the rows are multiples of one another, we're not going to be able to find a solution to the overdetermined system. We encountered this previously in episode 9 when we discussed non-square linear systems and how to solve them. But the overdetermined system comes up quite frequently, and as such, we need to know how to get something out of it. And that is going to be the topic of today's video. Howdy folks, welcome to the 10th episode in this computational linear algebra series. I'm Nick, one of many space cowboys, and today we're going to discuss the method of least squares. Now, the overdetermined system is something that we can't just ignore because it's going to come up quite frequently, especially if you plan on doing any kind of applied mathematics, any type of scientific work, or anything in engineering or even technology for that matter. The overdetermined system comes up a lot, and therefore it's very, very important that we understand how to do something with it. But in order to understand the issue with the overdetermined system, we're going to need to also understand what's causing this issue. To better understand this, we can take a look at the column space of our A matrix, which if we're considering the 3 by 2 case, will be a two-dimensional plane in 3 space. Now, if you'll notice, our B vector is 3-dimensional but our x vector is only two dimensional. And that's because our x vector is going to exist in our column space, but our b vector is not restricted to being in that column space. And so as such, our b vector can sit outside of the plane of the column space of our A matrix. And so there is going to be no x vector that we can put in to the system that is going to reproduce that b vector since it does not sit in the plane of our column space. But we can't just give up. We need to find a way of getting something out of this overdetermined system because it's going to come up a lot. And if we can't do anything with the overdetermined system, well, we won't be able to do a lot of the things that we can do today when it comes to machine learning and AI or uh, model fitting or anything for that matter. So what do we do? We approximate our x vector solution. We do this by projecting our b vector onto the column space of our A matrix, and then we find the best x vector that reproduces the projection of our b vector onto the column space. We do this by first taking our system and multiplying both sides by a transpose. What this does is it gives us the projection of our b vector onto our column space on the right hand side of our equation. Then we just solve for the x vector through conventional means. But how good is our x vector approximation? Because after all, this is an approximation, so it's not going to perfectly reproduce the b vector. So ax will not equal b. Well, we do this by computing a difference vector. Then we take the two norm of the difference vector, and based upon how large or small this value is, we can get a really good understanding of how good our x vector approximation is. But let's examine the norm of this difference vector here. Because what we're doing by solving for the projection of our b vector is we're actually finding uh, the difference in each one of the different components between our b vector and the projection of the b vector on our column space. What this is doing is it's minimizing each one of these squared terms right here. And so this is where we get the name least squares. And therefore, our x vector is oftentimes referred to as the least squares solution, since each one of these terms is going to be the least 
possible squared value in this difference vector. So let's talk computer code. After all, this is computational linear algebra, and as usual, all the code will be linked in the description down below in the computational linear algebra repository. We're working in the 10th episode directory, and we're starting off in our linalg package. You can see I have defined a new function in line 118 called least squares that accepts an A matrix and a B vector. In lines 119 and 120, we are going about computing A transpose A and A transpose B. Then in lines 21 and 22, we are solving via our conventional methodology of structured Gaussian elimination paired with back substitution. And then we are computing the norm. Now, we are cheating a little bit in using the NumPy linalg package, but I don't want to have to go through and show you all the, you know, the rigmarole of uh, computing a two-norm of a vector. It's not particularly difficult, but you should understand how to code that up at this point. Then we are returning our x vector and the norm since we need the norm so that we can understand just how good our least squares solution or x vector approximation is. We can test this out with the least squares part one driver code uh, where we're generating an overdetermined system, a three by two overdetermined system, just to stay consistent with the examples we've been working with. And so we have a three dimensional uh, B vector as well. Notice that I have this perf counter here, and that's just to uh, take into account runtime of the computation of the least squares solution and the norm. In line 17, we are computing the least squares solution and norm by calling our function in our linalg package. And then we're outputting our least squares solution, the norm, and then we're also uh, outputting our difference vector, just so that we can get a better understanding of what's going on with our norm. We can run this a few times, and in the first run, you can see that we get a norm of approximately 8. And this is actually not too terrible of a least squares solution, which is right up here, because when we compute the difference vector, or as a check as I'm calling it here, we are negative 3 units off our first dimension, 7.5 units approximately off the second dimension, and only half a unit, or 0.57 units off the third dimension. You can see this runs pretty quickly also. Running this again, now we have a vector norm of 94. Here's our least squares solution, and you can see that with our check, uh, we are very far off on two of our dimensions, but our third dimension is only negative 4.2 zero off, which, all things considered for an approximation, isn't particularly terrible. On a third run, you can see our norm is 118, and here's our least squares solution. And when we look at the difference vector, you can see we are very far off from representing our B vector. And so this would not be considered a particularly good approximation or least squares solution, depending on whatever uh, vocabulary you want to use. Now, in most real-world situations where you're going to use the method of least squares, you're probably going to use NumPy's linalg least squares function, if you're going to be using Python, that is. And so I figured, why not show you how to do that? So now we're working with the uh, with NumPy here, and you can see that almost everything is exactly the same, except now we have this linalg least squares uh, function in line 16, where we're passing in an A matrix and B vector. We also have this R condition, but uh, I will leave the documentation linked in the description down below for the linalg lsq function, as there's a lot of different things that are actually being computed here. We have our uh, least squares solution. The norm that is output is not square rooted, so we need to square root that. Otherwise, it's just the sum of all the squares, pretty much. And then we're outputting all the same stuff. On our first run, you can see that we have a norm of 44. So this isn't a particularly uh, terrible uh, least squares solution or approximation. But you can see we are definitely not representing our B vector all too terribly well.
on a second run through now we have a norm of 36 and again you can see that that's not particularly terrible but we're still uh, 20 un 26 units off the third dimension 10 units off the uh, second dimension and negative 22 units off the first dimension lastly though here we have a norm that's just under six and you can see that we're approximately three maybe four units off of each one of the different dimensions uh, representing our b vector so all things considered this is not a particularly terrible least square solution or approximation and folks that's it that is the method of least squares and now we know how to work with all the different kinds of uh, matrices or at least we know how to do get something whether it's a solution or an approximation slash least squares solution we know how to work with all the different kinds of systems and so next time we'll finally get into looking at how we can apply linear algebra in real world scenarios i want to thank you all very much for watching if you have any questions comments or concerns do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below and i hope to see you again next time